with the background. Why I said um, background is I just want so I want to um, I want to, um, us to have an overview about manual testing, about testing in general, and what type of um, when I mean testing. What do I mean by testing? What am I doing? In what phase is testing? So that's where I'm starting with this background. So first is that um, I get, uh, I'm going to use examples just for you to be able to understand when I say testing and when we say the word testing, software testing, manual testing. The example is um, first, most of the time um, when we wake up in the morning, you have a, a view that everyone will stretch when you get up from the bed. You raise, stretch your arms, stretch your legs, and things like that. If you guess what you're doing is that you're trying to see, oh, can I stretch my arms properly? Can I stretch my leg? Can I move my back? Can I turn? Then you get up from the bed. That is one form of testing. Everybody does it in the morning. Before you can stand up from the bed, you need to just stretch just ensure that everything is working as expected then you begin your day another example is a phone when you want to get a phone you don't just you just go to the phone store or there online you look at each of the properties what is this um, kind of phone can I actually press the mute button? Is this going to work? What are the new features? What has been added to this kind of phone? Or why do I need this phone? When you look at all the functional parts of the phone, then you are actually testing the phone, seeing if it's actually going to meet what you expected, what you actually need the phone for. And also, an example is a car. If you're buying a new car, you would expect to take the delivery from a showroom. Maybe any any car you've gone to to discover um, to discovery or to go and get um, a new car. The first thing is that you will enter into the car when you go to the showroom. You check each cars have five wheels, one at the back, then the four tires are there. It has a horn. It has an engine. It has a, um, a door. The, font, the function and the features of the car are there. You have to test. You have to see everything before you can actually purchase the car. That is an example of you testing in a real sense. Just using the phone, checking if it meets your expected, what well, this is what I want to use the phone for. Also, the car you're looking is this engine okay okay do i want a five seater or a seven seater what are the things that there does it have a horn when i press it is it working is the engine kind of okay um does it have um, um a steering wheel nobody can just carry a car and say no there's no steering wheel there or it doesn't have um wheels the the wheels complete you can't drive that car so those are the testing. You look at the essential components, everything that is necessary before you can get a car. So that's just majorly like a background of what we are doing. Then the next thing I'm talking about are references because what we are doing, of course, we've got different things that we have actually um, we've, uh, I use and also every one of us. One is um, Guru99. You can go use these are part of the references and also test tools that are advice that you can use at this phase. Um, also, we've got tutorial points and also um, software testing um, is by Brian Ambly. I've got a soft copy. We have a soft copy. Copy. If you need one, we can actually send it to your email if you have one. But I would advise you to buy one. The textbook is actually needed because when you mean foundational guide, this is the basis of testing. 
the nitty gritty from the grassroots. So you actually need something to put you. At every time, you can refer back to that textbook. So that's the reason I buy the textbook. But if you want the soft copy, which you can print, you can read them, please, as we are going along the class, the, be the, uh, the best thing for you is to be reading ahead of the class. And also when you read along, once we are doing this, it gives you a great understanding and you'll be able to get what we are doing. But I'll tell you, there's nothing to fear about. This is an interesting class and it's going to be as slow as possible for you to be able to grab everything. And please, also, it might be free lecture, but make sure you get every use and use it. Don't think because I'm not paying for it, I'll do it anytime. Take out your time with these few weeks. Achieve what you want to achieve, and you can change your life. That's my own. And those are the references we are, I'm going to be using. Uh, myself and Pat will be using in this manual course. Also, um, the topics that uh, we'll be covering are the fundamentals of testing, testing principles, the testing process. These are um, the principles of testing that we have to follow. Of course, as I said, you buy a new car, there are things you need to check in the new cars. Well, does it have a wheel? Does it have a horn? Does it have um, a windscreen? I hope I won't be injured. When I drive this car, I hope I won't, it won't injure me or I won't die. Loss of life. So those are the principles and also the test process. Conduct of um, ethics, I mean, code of ethics, testing life cycle, interesting parts, test levels, test types, static testing, test design technique, test case design technique, black box, structured based techniques, experienced based techniques, choosing test techniques. All these topics we will be covering in this phase of manual testing. And I hope to see major everyone also along working with us. Please not to forget, at any time, you can send your questions in. I will check them. Also, what is testing? These are our objectives, our goals. What do we want to achieve at this manual testing? What is testing? How is testing done? Why is testing necessary? General principles of testing. Fundamentals of testing, self-assessment questions. All these are the objectives we are going to be doing. Just in a PowerPoint in a beautiful face, just for you to see how interesting manual testing is going to look like. Same what is testing, what is necessary, the general principles. Now, I'll go ahead to testing. Testing, which I've discussed in the background. I've given examples, which I talked about the car, I talked about the phone, I talked about when you wake up in the morning. So everything alongside is what we want to now put in progress as I'm talking about testing. This is an activity that is performed to demonstrate that something is working as expected. Something is working as expected. You want to demonstrate it. I woke up in the morning. Is my leg and my hand stretchable? Can I move my body? Am I fine? The phone I'm using, is it working as expected? Can I receive a call? When someone calls me, can I cut off the phone? Can I check my messages? Can I download stuff onto my phone? Those are the things I'm looking for to ensure they are working as expected. Can I drive the car? Is, there, is the engine working as expected? Does he have a horn? Does he have a windscreen? Does he have wheels? All these are part of the things you are testing to be sure that it's working as expected. So at any phase you want to, you are testing just to demonstrate that it's showing is working as expected. That is what testing is all about. I want to be sure that whatever I'm doing is working. That's the reason why we are testing. Is testing for me? Oh, I don't know. Is it for is it for me? Is it for you? Well, let's find out. Yes, testing as a discipline. 
Well, as a discipline, there are different phases, and I think um, Mr. Digi talked about some types of um, jobs that you can do, what you can apply for when it comes to testing phase, the like QA manager, test engineer, test analyst, everything that he wrote on the board. But who is a good software tester? Who is a good software tester? Someone that can write and is also, you can talk that's verbally and also you can write to communicate to people that this is what I found. This is the this is the bug that I have found. This is the defect. This is what is wrong. Now, take for instance, an example is a water car. When you press the on and it's not working, what do you want to tell? How do you want to say it out? You can't just say you press the on, it's not working, and you keep you keep quiet. No, you need to be able to explain. Oh, Mr. Man, um, I've done this and I'm expecting that the on should this should happen to the car when i press it on it should uh, i should hear the horn but i'm not so you need to write be able to speak about that and also write that yes this is what i have gotten just something very simple but people can understand whosoever picks it up can actually understand then you must have a passion for it anything you want to do is worth doing well so if you want to if you want to do testing as as a profession you have to have a passion for it if you don't have passion for anything you want to do then you can't go alongside for it you can't go forward but if you have a passion then that's why your technique, technique, your technical skills, technical skills. Uh, Mr. Gigi said something about Java. If you look at it, Java is one of the technical skills and part of the way you can actually, in terms of automation. But your technical skills, you can see, oh, where is this horn not working? This phone that is not, I can't press the, um, I can't cut. Uh, I can't press the red button. What is wrong? You must be able to technically find the skills, and that is where we are. That is where the automation part of it comes in, and which I'll talk more about it. Analytical skills to be able to analyze what is wrong, um, what are the faces, and how do you want to do it. The attitude, your attitude towards it, and how do you bring it out. Also, the productivity. Those are good examples of a software tester. You can be a tester, you can be a test analyst, you can be a QA engineer, you can be a test engineer, software tester, mobile tester, performance tester, and it's a web tester. As long as testing is is got different faces when we test. Security testing, penetration testing, UAT tester, on and on, we've got a series of them. Testing as a discipline, that's the next step. Um, you must be inquisitive, work smartly, think out of the box, patience, attention to details. An example is, I've gone for an interview, I'll say most recently, yeah, maybe last year. At the interview, after I was told to talk about myself, after five minutes, I finished saying a lot about myself then i mentioned i pay attention to details at this phase when i said attention to details he paused i finished they've asked me all the questions the only thing he mentioned i said you pay attention to details i said yes and what i've learned is that when i'm going for an interview as i'm entering the office i start looking around looking what are the banners there um there might be flower verses there what did they write on the banner when i open the door go to the leaf what floor am i going to who is taking me in this simple attention to details really goes a long way at the end of the interview he said you said i pay attention to details what floor are you doing this interview now this is a big company i'm not someone came to pick me the agency the agent after the agent took me up he was the one that pressed it it's all automated so i can't i don't know the floor but when i got on that floor the first thing my eyes 
was on was five. So I knew we were on the fifth floor. Immediately, he now said, I now said, okay, the floor we are, the fifth floor. And he shook my hand and said, congratulations, because you say you pay attention to details. So that is where attention to details, patience, think out of the box. X plus Y, what are the things outside it? Can I face this boundary? Go zero, one. You have to test in different variables, which we are going to talk about further in this testing. Um, now, the next one is who can test? As I've said, anybody can test. Testing is not rocket science. Anyone can test. Would everybody uses a phone? If you can drive a car, you can test a car. If you sleep and wake up in the morning or if you're moving, you are testing your body. I can't test. I can only test my body. Anyone can test. So be ready for it. So what can be tested? Hardware. That's physical devices, something you can touch and see. For example, a laptop. You can see it, you can do it. Or oh, those are the hardware. Then software. It cannot be seen or it cannot be touched. E.g. like internet browser, of course, we can't see what is behind the code and what it is. The games, you can only see from the front end which you are actually able to play, play with. So those are what can be tested. Software testing. So software testing. This is an activity that is executed to demonstrate that, soft, that a software that may be a package, a system, a product, a web app, a mobile app is working as expected. Those are also part of the examples. Software testing is not complex, not at all. It is not difficult to implement, execute and practice. Software testing is a discipline. So. It is not complex. As I've said, there are things, there are processes that we follow. There are, there are ways you can test. All those ways, are part, they are going to be, you will be taught how to test and what are the things to test on a high level, a low level, how we are going to test it, what are the test cases, what are the test conditions, what are the things that we look at, a test script as a whole, how to plan your testing, what are the strategies, all these are bad. So it's not complex. It is not difficult to implement. It's not difficult. We are talking about manual testing, software testing. You are doing everything manually, reading from the handout. You have bought a motorcycle, a, a bicycle for your, for, your, you know, for your children. You want to assemble the bicycle. You need to go through the manual. So from there, you'll be able to um, put things together from the pictures and you can actually fix and bring up the product you have bought. So, how can a software be tested? A software can be tested manually and automatically. Manual testing. We execute manual testing that's executing the test cases without tools. So we are not using any tool when it comes to manual testing. The only tool we are using is for you to be able to type, just to be able to write. And as you've gone through the Excel classes, you can use a spreadsheet to actually write all your test cases. Just normal typing, this is what I have seen, to be able to write it down. That is it. You are not running through using any tools. But not to forget, there are still tools that you can type inside. You are not using any tool to run manual testing. But automation testing, a tester will execute the test cases with a tool. So that is why we are learning Java as part of this. So it works hand in hand when it comes to manual testing, automation testing. So why do we test? Why do we test? We test to avoid software failures. As I've initially said, 
we have to we, we are testing to ensure that there are no failures in any software that we are we are we are working on. If you have a mobile app and a mobile phone and you are checking you are ex these are the things you are expecting to see. It must be there. If it's part of the requirement, they must be there. So that's the reason that we are testing that the software that we are testing does not fail. Just to avoid failure, that's the reason why we test. A system needs to be tested, needs to be adequately tested. Are the right sort of testing needed to be done as well? What are the consequences of testing? Loss of money, for instance, if you don't test properly, like maybe in a financial environment, say for instance, you have gone to an ATM. I just I didn't even put in a card in the ATM at all, and there's money there. <laughs> if people take the money, they are losing money, they are losing all the things. But if it was properly tested, I should be able to put in my card, a, veri a verification should be done and validation back end, then it tells me this is Yemi's card and it comes out, I put in my right pin, it should tell me, then when I press whatever cash, it should bring the accurate cash. So it's procedures, it's steps. So also, it could be loss of time, it could be loss of business reputation, injury and death. Death in the form of um, you've, you didn't test the car properly, the car doesn't have a brake. Then you 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 carry the, you just drive the car out. There's no out. It will cause death. So those are part of the consequences of why we should always test. There is a level of risk acceptable for any software. Yes, as I've said, financial application. For instance, um, looking at the bank that I said, you can't just see money by the ATM. No. Um, e-commerce, we are talking about the website, and also, let's say, airline, all these are part of um, level of risk that we are checking when we are testing. Now, we are going to error, defect, failure. Error, defect, failure. Error, defect, failure. Error is a mistake, is a mistake that leads to a defect which can cause an obvious failure. So, like a, um, for, for instance, if you have, if you find a, maybe um, the phone that you are working, you are, you, are, you are testing is not working as expected, it will, it will actually lead, lead to um, to a defect, and from the defect is a failure. So there are procedures, and this is where we are coming to with these three. And these three error, defect, failure works hand in hand. When you find an error, it leads to a, um, a defect, and it leads to a failure. Now, error. Error is human mistake. Anybody can make a mistake. Now, when you're testing a particular thing, like for you are testing, um, uh, um, you, you are reading through a content, like you, you have five, you have a whole textbook to read, and you've been reading it, reading it consecutively. You found a lot of error. If you drop it down and you give it, I finished reading it, I found my own error. Oh, fine, it's absolutely it's fine. If I give it to another person to read and check for errors or spelling mistakes, they will find another one. If you give it to a third person, the same person will find an error. So it's always human mistake. You testing, checking often doesn't mean that you won't find um, you won't find a mistake in whatever you're doing. So error is always human mistake. An error appears not only due to logical mistake in the code made by the developer. Anyone in the team can make mistake during the different phase of software development. For instance, in a team, we've got a business analyst, 
school is the person that gathers the requirements, is the ones that talks to the, uh, the stakeholders. I've gotten to stakeholder A. This is what stakeholder A and B wants. He, he or she has written it down as a business analyst. He has given it to the developer, develop this. And the develop, and not to forget, is whatever stakeholder A and B tells um, the business analyst, he's going to write as a requirement. The requirement that is being given to the business analyst, she, the business analyst also, there might be a mistake there. That's why when you are, once a business analyst gets on a requirement, he or she writes down the requirements, send it back to the people that have given him the requirement and say, stakeholder A and B, you have said these are the points that you have made. Is this what you want? Yes or no? He comes back with a yes. Then the procedure is, I've given this, moved it down to the developer. The developer does his own bit, moves it down to the tester. Now, some of the examples of the errors that we find are the business analyst may interpret or misunderstand requirements. So once the business analyst misinterprets or misunderstands the requirements, it means whatever is coming down from the developer to any one of us is all misinterpreted. So that is already an error. It's a mistake because there was no, the, it was the understanding of the BA, every one of us we were working with. So once is the mistake is made from that point, then there's an issue. And that is where testers come in. So as a business analyst, when you when you write the requirement, you send it to the SM, um, to the SMEs, that's the stakeholders. When you send it to the stakeholders, they now come to back to the tester, the business analyst. Can you check also if there's anything we are losing? Maybe there's a gap or there's a risk in whatever we are doing. We also test. You can test the requirement. Check. Check whether you understand what the person is because it's a requirement. When you are given a requirement, you should be able to understand whatever the person is giving you. That is why you that is what you are going to test based on. Then the customers may provide insufficient or incorrect information. So customers also might provide insufficient or incorrect information. That's at the level of mistakes that you can some errors that you can make. The architects may also uh, cause a flaw in software design. That's the um, so all the the architects, the developers, and they're about they might have a flaw in the software design. People on the team can also make mistakes due to unclear or insufficient requirements. Time pressure and the likes can be make you example. These are examples of errors. So, not to forget, errors are human mistakes. Because most of the time, you can go for an interview and you will be asked, do you know the difference between an error, defect, or a failure? So, I'll go to the next one, which is a defect. A defect is an inconsistency between expected and actual results. Is an in, is a inconsistency um, between expected and actual results. What is expected results? Expected. This is what I want to see on my phone. I must be able to use it to type. I must be able to call. I must be able to press the red button to know that yes, I'm ending the call. And this is the expected thing you're having. But the actual result is what am I seeing? I have the phone with me now. What am I seeing? Can I press the red button? No. Can I end the call? Can I call this? That is what you have. So an expected and actual result. So a defect is a software product. In a software product reflects the inability of the software to comply with the specified requirements subsequently. So, if you um, like, you find a defect because the major thing as a tester is a manual tester is for you 
to be able to find defects to be able to find bugs that's the reason why you're a tester you must be able to see beyond everything so once you are given the software the major thing you are dealing with is what is not what is not right with this software you have to take it that this is the requirement i have is this what the developer gave me is this what is in my test environment it must marry up so if it's not what is in the um requirement and you have it in in whatever is being built you bring it out those are the defects because that is what you as a tester must find so as i said a defect is a software in, in a software product reflects the inability of the software to comply with the specified requirements subsequently prevent the software application from from performing the expected work and that's what I've explained about the expected and actual results an error that is that the tester finds is known as a defect an error that the tester finds is known as defect the defects are also known as either a fault but majorly like a bug so you can also call defect as a fault or a bug so some people call it defect some people call it a fault some people call it bug so an error if you find an a, a human mistake and you don't correct it from where you find it it will lead to a defect that's where you will get a bug from the bug is when it leads to the next one so now we are going to a failure before the failure not to forget i said defect an error that the tester find is known as defect the defect are also called or fault failure failure is is a consequence of a defect failure is a consequence of a defect so when you find an error it leads to a defect and the defect leads to a failure so now if you have found an error and it was not corrected it will lead to a defect which is the bug and the bug will make the system not work it will make it fail so that is why you have an error a defect and a bug so in the hierarchy you get an error first then it moves to it it forms a defect which is a bug or a fault then that fault gives you that failure that is what will make it work so now i've found an error in the um in the card i want to buy if it's not properly done it will lead to if i say oh i want this is what i want in the car and it's not done properly there is no engine there then it will lead to a defect which it means there is a mistake there is a bug in there from that defect it will lead to a failure you can't move the car you can't carry the car you can't drive it if you drive it you can die so that is the hierarchy so from first is error from error to defect defect to failure so failure of course when the software fails to perform in the real environment so you might and this phase failure or cause when software fails to perform in real environment you are going to encounter this a lot when you are when you're working on the field so most of the time when a developer finish development all he says is is working because fine is working in the dev environment when they push you to test the environment maybe due to infrastructure even it might not even work most of the time it doesn't work as expected for us so that's where we start finding the bugs so most it all is working from my end as long as it's working in my machine i hear that all the time so if they push it to your own test environment you find out that it's not working as expected from that time is it doesn't work in the real environment but in my work in their own dev environment as we go along you're going to understand why it's not working in some environment in other words after the creation and execution of software code if the system does not perform as expected due to occurrence of any defect then it is termed as failure note all defects result in failure some remain inactive in the code so 
some you might not you might not even see it. It might just be in the code and may never be noticeable. At this point I'll just pause a bit for five minutes and I'll say any question I'll look up to answering any question. Questions, please. Questions, please. Can we classify it? Can we classify, someone said, can we classify testing as DevOps? What do you mean, can we classify testing as DevOps? DevOps is a different, is a different um, department on its own. So, okay, when, they, when I mean DevOps is a different um, department on you, you can test on that DevOps. So there are things that you can talk about, the infrastructure, the configuration, all this, you can do your testing on that, that phase. So that's where, um, when you mean can we classify system testing as DevOps, um, in quotes, maybe you are thinking, Testing is um, DevOps. You can test it in um, DevOps is another is another tool, and that's why the Azure DevOps are coming in. It's just a training for you to be able to use it's a tool, and also you can. It depends on the infrastructure, so I can't say I can classify testing as DevOps or not. You have to test everything. That's it. Sorry, admin, please. Um, I'm missing some of the questions. You talked about the different types of testing. What is the difference between QA engineer and QA tester? Good question. Thank you. So <laughs> that's why with, um, if you listen to the introduction of uh, Mr. DG, these are just, uh, they are just names for, um, for, these are just names, titles given to it. A QA engineer, they expect you to work as an automation tester, both manually and automatedly, not to forget. That's it. And a QA tester is like you're doing your normal testing. It could also be either manual or automation. A QA engineer can also be manually only. So is it correct? Oh, sorry, please, can, can you, um, admin, please, can you help me go back? to the top, let me see what I can, yeah, I can go back, don't worry. So, um, thank you, Adi. can we classify testing as a, when, when you get an error, when testing, can it not be corrected? Yes, it can be corrected. That's why you, when you get an error, when you're testing, it can be corrected. So that's why I said the earlier you catch the error, the better for you and also for the organization. Because when you catch it, when you get the error at the BA level, where it is just written, it is absolutely good. By that time, she will only, he or she will go back and do the correction on that um, basis. So when you finish uh, the correction, you proofread again, check alongside, and everybody's happy with it. Then, no, it's just still written. Nothing has been involved. But when it gets to the developer, after the development, resources have gone, things are done. So by that time, you are, you are sure to know that everything then is um, you're already incurring more, 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 more losses for the company. That's where, in terms of the consequences of not testing early, that's loss of money. That's where it comes in. So, um, so, um, sorry, I am. Um, can it be a double up as a tester? Can it be a double up as a tester? So to be honest, <laughs> this is um, nowadays when I get um, some, you see some, just to say um, a BA and a tester. Yes, you could you could do the work of a BA, 
It's gathering requirements. You, you must be able, as I said, attention to details. A business analyst is getting what everything you are telling him. In this mobile application, look, let's take, for instance, an iPhone or maybe like an Android phone, you started with maybe Samsung um, J5. There's a new one, Samsung S5. Now tell me, is still same Samsung, there's J5. The next one is S5. What is the difference? Maybe they add just a new feature. You need to get that feature, add it to the thing. So attention to the details, to details are kind of, so you can you can also work as a BA. Um, I've I've worked in a place where there is no requirement, no BA on ground. I need to gather the requirement myself, and also do the testing yourself. So that's where you you must have an understanding. So they will tell you you will be told this is what we want you to do. You've been given the instruction, but you must have an understanding of what you have been given. That is when you can write and do on that basis. Please, can, please, what kind of test books will you recommend for software testing? As I said in the, um, in the second slide um, for the software testing, um, second slide, I said software testing is written there. Um, and RTQB ISAP Foundation Guide by Brian Amblin. Just Google Brian Amblin's name, then you can get the textbook. So is it correct to say anyone in software dev team can find an error? <laughs> anyone in software develop, someone asked a question to say, so is it correct to say anywhere in the software dev team that the development team can find an error? Error has different levels and stages. So yes, anyone can find an error. But that's why a good software tester will find a better error, which is at risk to bot the business. So when you are given the system to test, or given the um, when you are given an application to test, there are errors that you are expected to see as a software tester. So anybody can find error, but you can find a better error. Now, not to forget, I said something earlier. When you're reading a book, when the first person finds it, he can only see a few errors. When the second person does, he will find another error. You, as the third person, will find a better one. So that's the way it's done. Can a tester do all the testing? <laughs> yes, you can. Know. That's why that's why you're doing the two-phase, both manual and automation. As you're doing manual testing alongside Reason for manual is just like a background, just for you to have a foundation about what testing is. Then what is the oriented language you want to use? The OPP, that's object-oriented language, you can specialize in. So that's why Java comes in. So you, have, you can do both. As a writer of test cases in given when then scenario manually, you can use it as automated test cases, which we'll explain to you before the end of the class of the course. Um, sorry, I think I have questions here. Can we get this again? As a tester, can you test with Excel? Yes, that is manual testing. That's why I said it's a spreadsheet where you can write all your test cases, your test process, how you reproduce the blog, so you can use it. In some um, companies that they still do the native way, so which means everything you're writing, you can do it on that spreadsheet and you have a template which you can work on. In software testing course, will there be talks about the different software testing methodology? Yes, there will be. And I think before, if we can cover it today, if not, 
by end of the class is here. Ah. Yes, we are going to talk about all the methodologies, and that's why um, that's part of it. Yes, we are going to talk about the methodology. Does JavaScript have any relationship with testing? Absolutely, it does have a relationship with testing. JavaScripting, that's where all the testing, when you're testing web application, you're seeing some JavaScript errors and the like. So it comes alongside with testing. Great. All testing, all testing means security testing, web testing, regression testing, ETC. Yes, yes. So what you what you mean is um, all testing means security testing, web testing, yes, app testing, regression testing, retesting of bug fixes, functional testing, non-functional testing. All those are the principles of testing. Do anyone need to be technically survey to become a tester? Not at all. That's why you are building up. You have started now. Your list, your, you started as manual testing. Anybody can come into testing. There are still manual testing jobs. We cannot do 100% automation. Manual testers are still viable in the market. So everybody, you, you don't do, you need to be technically to become a tester. No. And that's why I said anybody can test. So that's the way it is. So in the absence of no question, I'm just checking again if, um, let me just see again, if, uh, okay. The, uh, the textbooks, I said it earlier, that if you need a soft copy, just send down your email to um, Mr. Deji, you'll get the software. So as I go alongside, I've got a question, so someone can just please an, um, answer. What are the what is the difference between error, defect, and failure? Anyone going? Error, defect, and failure. Anyone? Can you type your answer, please? Difference between Error, defect, and failure. Yes, error is human mistake, correct? What is defect? Thank you. Yes. Error leads to defect, correct? Difference is inconsequential between actual and correct. Thank you, everyone. I can see, yes, we are all following. So I'll go alongside, continue. So this time around, so um, the next one I'll be talking about is Keep software under control. Keep software under control. Exhaustive testing of complex system is not possible. Now, that's why um, when they tell you, oh, exhaustive testing of it is not, is not possible. You can't, when you're given a system to test, you can test everything within the coverage, and that's why you have in another um, another phase where we are going to talk about how you are going to do the boundaries, how you will be able to know that this is how it's going to be tested. When when we say exhaustive testing of complex system is not possible, what is done is in some companies you are given like um, a yardstick that where is this when we mean we we'll finish testing. You hear me? I'm sure that yes, this system is fine. I can say it's fine and. I'm happy for it to go, um, go live, is you must meet 85% of this checklist. So there is a checklist to be able to validate that, yes, we have done it. Now, if you have tested and you look at it, that out of maybe 10 of the list that they've given you, the company's strategy is if it meets 85% of it, that testing can be done. We can release it. We'll sort out every other thing when it gets live. 
Now you have tested as a tester. Maybe you test, and maybe six of it is what is in the in the checklist that I've gone through. You will know that yes, at that phase, you can give it a go to say yes, it's done, because that time you have um, uh, is not up to what the standard of the company is, but. Some companies don't give a yardstick. They expect you as a tester to know when it is ready to test. So we are going to talk intensively when we get to that um, to the point of this. So exhaustive testing of complex systems is not possible. So you can't say, I can test everything. No. But you will test in a analytical and um, a realistic way to know that, yes, this is what has been achieved. If every test has been run, testing will go on for a longer time and products may never get into the market. So what you are saying is that if every test has been run, testing will go on for... So if you are saying that if I want to do exhaustive um, testing to make sure that this complex system is... is is done. I want to start checking. Um, is the first page okay? When I log in, is this what I'm finding? Um, the text, are they okay? You, if you do it continuously like that, we can use years to check. I can test a whole system for a year. Now, not to forget, you've got, you've got um, a deadline. You have to meet the deadline. So if you don't meet the deadline, so what is the essence of you as a tester being there? So that's the reason why you have to test within some capacity, within some range, within some boundary using some some techniques to be able to do, to, to do your testing. And we'll talk about that. Is it possible to run it is it possible to run every possible test? Simple or complex system? We are talking we'll talk about that. With large um, and complex system, it is never it will never be possible to test everything exhaustively. In fact it is impossible to test even moderately complex system exhaustively. So that's why I was trying to tell you that you can't test everything, but you can be sure you have touched every face. And I will we will explain to you when we get to that bridge. So when is testing enough? Testing and risk. Testing and quality. Deciding enough, when enough is enough. So now, at this phase, we are talking about testing. When is testing enough? When will you know that, yes, it's enough for me to stop testing? When is the right time for me to stop testing? So it comes with that. But when you talk about testing, risk, when I'm testing, what are the risks? That you, because you must ensure you know the risk of what you are testing. You are testing a car, you must know the risk. If I don't test this car properly, loss of life will be there. Injury will be there. Money, you can be sued to court. All these are part of the things you are looking at. I'm testing and I'm looking at the risk. So all these have to go hand in hand. So when you are testing a, a website, when you look at the website, you test, oh, when I log in, I hope when I log out of this place, nobody else can use my login. I know prior to this time, I think maybe last, is it two or three years ago, there was a system I was uh, working on. When you log in, it's a financial system. When you log in into that system, when you come out of um, the system, and you check your balance, you check your money, you do everything. If I log back immediately using going on that same system, I, will be, I don't need to put any password or put anything. It will go directly into the person's account. Now, if the person has got $1 million or £1 million inside there, it is very easy. Out, it can be transferred. So at that phase, you need to know that when anybody logs in into the account and logs out, in the split of second, the out should be totally locked. So you have to test the security part of it, ensure that they can they are not able to hack it 
check all those so that testing and risk. Now let's get testing and the quality. What type of testing am I doing? What quality am I doing? You are testing something. Are you giving it good quality? Is it testing? Is it working as expected? Is the quality of that safe? So you have to ensure that deciding when enough is enough. And that's where I brought up the issue of have I gone through all the checklists? Is it up to 85%? Has this been achieved? And what are the, um, is this what the company wants? All the checklists, the UAT checklist or whatever checklist you have in the organization or you or yourself have created, then you can be able to look look at it. Um, have I, am I able to log in? Is the password correct? Am I on the landing page? After the landing page, can I re-register? Can I log out of it? Can I log back in? What happens? So you have to be recording all the events to ensure that, yes, it is. By that time, you should be able to decide if testing is enough. Now, general principles of testing. General principles of testing. Please, and if you have any question, just let me know. What is the secret for begging, beginning getting a job as a tester? Um, before I go along, I'll just take a Q&A because I think some questions are up here. So um, it says, what is the secret for beginning getting a job as um, getting a job as a tester? This is the secret. The secret is you knowing software testing. That is the first secret. And that is where if you are, for you to be in this chat, it means you have been listening to um, to the class right from the beginning. So this is the secret you have started. But now, the getting a job is you now being able to know how to be able to communicate and relate whatever you have been taught at the end of this course. So that's where the good software tester -ish, um, role comes in. Sorry, I'm still failing as you can by the checklist, do you mean the exit criteria? When you mean exit criteria, is we have entry criteria. How do I start testing? And when do I stop testing? Checklist is kind of a different is 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 a different format. It comes in different format, and it depends on how you how your company or your organization or yourself see it. I call entry and exit criteria a different model. A checklist is a face, is a picture. What do I want to see? What is expected? What does the business want to see at this? A logical thinking, analytical thinking of everything must be put in the spreadsheet. How I do my things. Now I look at what has been done. I will map it out with each of the requirements. Requirement A, do I have it in the checklist? Yes. If it's there, if it's not there, I will add it. Requirement B, that is the way you do the end. So when you mean exit criteria, we are coming down to that, not now. So I wouldn't want to push that. I'm still talking about checklist now. So I will want to push that forward now so we don't take. So let me go again. When can a test be concluded and pushed to live environment? Now, um, at this um, at this phase, a test. That's why we are saying um, we will decide when enough is enough. That's where you will know when a test will be pushed to life environment. Not to forget, before you start, a developer pushes to test environment. When you do, your organization have different levels of test environments. You as a tester also can decide what levels of environment you can have. You can have a test environment, a system test environment. You can have a UAT environment, which is a prepared environment. That you can have a production environment. Now, in test in test environment, you have the the raw test delivered to you in test environment. You test the nitty gritty. There are levels where you can test in test environment. After that is done, you move it to system. From there, you can move it to um, UAT. From UAT is a prepared environment where you can now be able to, to 
to when you cannot be able to check if everything in UAT environment, I am sure it is fine because UAT is mimicking what is in production. It's a mirror of what is in production. So when you say a mirror, it's just the same thing of what is in production. So once you are certified in UAT, you are the only one saying it. You as a tester, you are the, you are the one standing in as a user. So because a tester is working as a user. So which means in the process of a phone, I'm the user. I'm like thinking that whosoever buys the phone is me. So that's why you are a tester. So you are the first person testing it. Then when you do it in UAT, then it goes to the environment. Who creates events when testing? When you mean who creates events, we are talking about the test cases. How does it work? Um, test conditions. Test script as a you whole know, is created by you as a tester. What type of equipment does a software tester need? You, you add different um, equipment which you can use as a software manual tester. You can, it, um, you can use um, TFS, that's the information server, which Azure DevOps for writing most of your test cases alongside with whatever you're doing. So all these can be used. They are some of the tools you can use. You, um, we have Test Manager. We have Jira. We have Trello. All these can be used as software testing too. Is the checklist the same as test cases or acceptance criteria? Test cases is majorly like um, a procedure, um, is majorly telling you this is the process. I, I call test cases like a documentation of what I am going to do and what, I've been, what has been done. Because in test cases, you've got the expected and also you've got the actual results and you've got the status. So if you could test them, that's the test cases. But acceptance criteria also is like, um, this is what I want to see in the login. How many characters can be in the login? What do I need? Do I need a cap, a, a lowercase, and this? Those are the acceptance criteria. Now, a checklist is, are you able to log in? Yes, I can log in. Boom. Um, are you seeing the landing page? Yes, I can see the landing page. You tick it. After the landing page, what's the next thing? I navigate to the next page. So that's like a checklist. Others might see it in a different way. What are the major things you need to test in a test script? A test script comprises of everything. Test condition, test cases, expected, actual results is a script. So which means it is embedded with everything that you've got with testing to say, I have finished testing. This is my this is my reality. This is what I have done with this product. You can have it. That is what a test script is. Is embedded with everything. So in the absence of this, I think um, I meant to go to general principles of testing, which um, um, general. I'll, I'll just talk for the next three minutes and we'll continue. The class. So testing shows the presence of bugs. Exhaustive testing is impossible. I've discussed that earlier. Early, early testing. Early testing is um, you getting alongside with the PA first from the requirement base. So you are you are part of the testing. Any meeting right from the from day one, you are part of that meeting. You are testing alongside with them, telling them this is what you're expecting. That's why we talk about you being able to think out of the box logically because they can ask you what do you think and the likes when you are doing testing. So the earlier you start testing, the better for you and also for everyone. Defect cluttering, where the defects are being cluttered. So Pesticide paradox testing is is context dependent absence of fallacy. This will start in the next class. In the next class, prior to the time, I'd like to recap on what we have done today. Um, after the introduction by uh, Mr. Deji, the first thing we did was background, and I talked. I gave um, examples of a new car and a phone, and also you waking up in the morning. That is an um, example of it. And you can, when you get the textbooks, there are more examples in the textbook. References. 
um i spoke about this type of um, references you can go on guru 99 um tutorials um, points software testing is the textbook and also the foundational guide which you're going to use um which we are going to cover so we are going to talk about foundation and um, for, for the fundamentals of testing the testing principle all these and i think someone asked that um testing life cycle that's the life cycle we're going to um is part of um the life cycle he asked the question then i spoke about the objective what is testing how is testing done why is it necessary to test and the general principle these are the objective of what we want to accomplish so i started with what testing is and i said is the activity that is performed to demonstrate that something is working as expected also i said it's testing for me now we found out that testing is for everyone so the good software tester and that's where i mentioned everything that has to do with the verbal and written communication passion technical skills analytical skills attitude and productivity so testing as a discipline and all the others that um a tester a, a q engineer a test analyst all these are there then testing as a discipline then who can test anybody can test it's not rocket science so we can test what can be tested hardware and software also software testing i just embedded to just say it is not complex it's not difficult to implement and execute as you have seen everything i've been saying is not is something that anything to be tested has been created there's nothing new the only thing is that you are just getting an additional so you can get your materials from anywhere so you can be it could be experience based anyhow so you can get your materials to be able to test and how can is can a software be tested i said manually and automatically but we are doing manual testing now and that's why you are in this course if you want to move ahead you are going to do automation testing that's where the java class comes in why do we test which i said the reason why we test and the consequences if it's not tested pro um, properly loss of life loss of money loss of time loss of business reputation injury and death so also the risk then I thought, which i emphasize majorly on error effect on failure error is human mistake and i think most people got um got it from what i saw which i said the hierarchy is from error defect and failure um same thing i gave examples of error um i spoke on um, defect and other names that defects can be called are faults and bugs failure mm, then also i've started um the these can keep it software under control so um when is testing enough all this will be brought more on the next class in three minutes i'm open to any other question then we call it a day for this class and hopefully if patricia have anything to say she would take on so um let me just read out some of the questions i have here can tester work remotely for clients or is it usually a full-time job yes you can work remotely when you mean for clients clients are kind of um if you mean clients maybe you're working in a company and um the organization you're working for has a client you don't need to see the client you could do anything with your work when you're doing your work you just give a go ahead to say is there then they will switch off the button they can test from their own side so that's the way it's done so um so you can work remotely for a client um, Sorry, I'm just looking at some of the questions at not. Um, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. next Saturday. Yes. 
All right, in the absence of no question, uh, yes, yeah, so we call it a day. From next class, um, I just um, want every one of us to recap on what we have done. So the next class is kind of um, pushy so that we can just get more on the session. But it's an interesting time. We've now even started the interesting part of it, and I hope to see you all. Hopefully, we'll meet in the next class. Next week, Saturday, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Have a wonderful weekend. And see you next.